Good morning. Today I am going to explain the another one important category of antifungal drug. That category is uh, allylamine category. So in that category the important drug is terfenafine. So today I am going to explain the pharmacology of terfenafine. Terfenafine is a synthetic antifungal drug. It's orally effective drug. It's having fungicidal property. So particularly it is effective against the Candida and dermatophytes. <clears throat> the high amount of drug is going to deposit in the keratin, uh, same like a grisophobia. So the next one is mechanism action. We know the importance of ergosterol in fungi cell. The fungi is the best example for eukaryotes. It's having a outer cell wall and cell membrane and definite nucleus and all. So we uh, ergosterol is uh, one of the main component in the formation of cell membrane. The fungi cell capable to synthesize ergosterol by own indigenous pathway. <clears throat> the raw material is squalene. The squalene is converted into the squalene epoxide. Then further it is converted into the lanosterol. The lanosterol is finally it's converted into the ergosterol. So our drug is going to inhibit the pathway. <clears throat> So we know that already the azole derivative drug is going to inhibit the conversion of lanosterol into ergosterol. So our drug terfenafine is going to inhibit the conversion of squalene to squalene epoxy. Our drug is going to inhibit this the squalene epoxidase enzyme. So the conversion is blocked. That's a mechanism. If you want a single line mechanism, our drug terfenafine is going to inhibit the squalene epoxidase enzyme. That is more than enough. The next important one is pharmacokinetic properties of terfenafine. <clears throat> we already say that the terfenafine is orally effective drug. More than 70 percentage of the drug is absorbed through the oral route. But the bioavailability is just 40 percentage. The 30 percentage of the drug is going to lose during Asbas metabolism. So the bioavailability is just 40 percentage. But unfortunately, it's capable to bind with the plasma protein around 99 percentage. <clears throat> metabolism wise, terfenafine is going to metabolize in liver. So when it gets free form, when it is unbound from the protein, it's available in the free form. That time the liver is going to metabolize the drug. So the terfenafine is going to convert it into the in methylated form that is nothing but desmethyl terfenafine. The desmethyl terfenafine is undergone the dihydroxylated form, it's converted into the desmethyl dihydrodiol. Otherwise, the same desmethyl terfenafine is undergone the hydroxylation process, it's converted into the desmethyl hydroxy terfenafine. We already say that it's having a high protein binding capability, so the metabolism is definitely going to slow. So the half-life is more than 8 to 16 days. <clears throat> the adverse drug reaction of terfenafine is very rare. Even though uh, very rare, it's produced some uh, gastrointestinal disturbances, rashes, headache. It's the next important part is a drug interaction. Our drug terfenafine is having drug interaction with various drugs. <clears throat> it's going to alter the metabolism through that it increase or decrease the efficacy of those drugs. Acipitalol and uh, aspirin. If you take this drug along with uh, terfenafine, it's going to decrease the metabolism of those drugs, increase the therapeutic effect of acetylsalicylic acid and uh, acipitalol. <clears throat> Apart from this, some other drugs is going to alter the metabolism of terfenafine through that it's going to alter the therapeutic efficacy. The example acyclovir and alprozole. These are the drugs is going to decrease the metabolism of terfenafine. It's going to prolong the therapeutic efficacy of that drug. Already our terfenafine is having a long half life. So if you take these drugs, it may produce more half life and more therapeutic efficacy. It may cause toxicity also. Next, the important one is therapeutic uses. I already say that. It's very effective against the candida and dermatophytes. So it is used in the treatment for candidiasis and dermatophytosis. Apart from that, it is used in the treatment for and oncomycosis. 
that's all i hope you got some information from this video so if you have any doubt or clarification or critical comments feel free to write in comment section thank you for watching